Hey everybody, welcome to Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. This is episode number 43 of our YouTube channel and podcast, and I could not be more excited to continue working with you guys and uh, teaching you about personal finance topics that hopefully are helping you push towards financial freedom in your own life. Today, what we're going to talk about is payday loans, and these places seem to be on just about every corner anywhere. And they prey on the fact that Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. And if the bills are due and the money's not in, um, they're going to find their way to, to get money in hand. And so my goal today is to keep you from ever stepping foot into one of these places again and signing on the bottom line uh, because it is so detrimental to your financial success. So before we get started, please go down below and uh, click the big red subscribe button, like this video, click the, the thumbs up button. Uh, also, leave me any feedback in the comments uh, that you think about throughout this uh, video, or if you have a question, you can leave it down there and I will be sure to get back to you as well. Also, go and follow me on social media, at MNO with Dylan, um, and you can get a lot of good uh, tips and tricks and information uh, there that I put out every day. And then also you can check out my website if you want to learn more about financial coaching services that I offer. And that's www.mnowithdylan.com. So the payday loan, what is it? Well, what it is is a short-term borrowing product. So it's a it's short-term debt that an individual can take out um, based on their uh, income level and their uh, credit profile. And these are and these are not only short-term debts, they are high interest debts, high, high interest debts. And the reason that they are called payday loans is because the loan itself, the principle of the loan, the amount that you are given is typically a portion of the individual's next paycheck. So these loans charge high interest for short-term borrowing, and they're also known as cash advance loans or check advance loans. Uh, if you don't see the word payday loan, doesn't mean that it's not the same thing. Um, they can just be called and marketed as different things uh, because there is such a stigma behind that name payday loan uh, that is just so negative. So these loans, they don't require any collateral either. Uh, they are unsecured debts uh, that are really only backed by your ability to get another paycheck. And these loans may be considered what they called predatory loans. And a lot of regulation has been put in place to try to regulate the uh, high interest rates and uh, the ability for uh, this type of short-term lending to be done, uh, but they still exist and you can likely still find them in whatever town you're in now. So how do people go about obtaining these short-term loans, these payday loans? Well, these providers are, are typically just small credit merchants. Uh, they're not some big institution. And they have physical locations uh, with on-site credit applications. And um, they can get approved while they're there uh, for this type of loan. And some services, uh, they can also be online lending. And so all these things uh, make it very convenient for individuals to go get these loans, which they want it to be convenient. And to get a payday loan, uh, these individuals who are going to borrow, these borrowers are... Uh, just having to bring pay stubs from their employer, basically showing that they will be able to pay it back in the short term. Uh, they just want or need the money now. Um, and it's really interesting to note that 12 states and Washington, D.C. have all banned uh, these payday loans as of 2020. And so um, you can see that they are such a predatory bad thing for people's financial life, uh, yet 38 states still say, it's cool, keep, keep doing what you're doing. So you already know that I don't like them, but why do individuals actually take them out? Why do individuals actually go and get these loans? And there's four big reasons that I came up with as to why would somebody get a, get a, a payday loan? Well, the first would be they need to meet their immediate bills. So maybe they didn't budget or didn't budget well enough and the income is just not enough uh, to cover their immediate bills. Um, then they may just borrow uh, from their next check in order to um, go ahead and cover these bills. And this is a deadly cycle to fall into. And so many people do fall into the cycle to where they just are constantly borrowing from the next check and just over and over and over again, getting into these bad loans. And so um, 
that's something that that my plan, my financial action plan, helps you to guard against. Um, but it's also something that we just don't ever want you to fall into. And also, individuals might go get these loans um, for emergencies. So uh, if you know they need to cover some type of short-term emergency, they might go and get a payday loan. And this is particularly prevalent because Americans, on average, can't cover a four hundred dollar expense. And if you can't cover a four hundred dollar expense, then um, some relatively small emergency uh, can still really uh, tear you up financially and you may need to um, go get a payday loan if you are not um, doing the right things financially uh, to put yourself in the place to you know save money and, and be able to cover uh, such expenses. And so, so that's another reason that I could think of that individuals may go do this. And this next one kind of goes with one and two, um, but it's a way that people can borrow money and not have to go to their family members to do so or not have to go to people they know and ask for money. Um, because typically, if you're going to ask somebody for money or, or ask for you know, somebody to loan you money or lend you uh, money that you know or that is a family member, then it's typically not super large amounts. And neither, neither are payday loans. Payday loans are typically not really large amounts either. Um, but people just feel like this is a more impersonal way that they can just go and borrow money um, and not have anybody know that they did so um, and, and they can get their short-term needs or um, you know emergencies or whatever met. And then the last one, and I fear that the last one is far more prevalent um, than most. Uh, I feel like probably the most prevalent is having to meet immediate bills. Um, and this is, you know, something that people are having to do and they're doing it in a, in a cycle. And so they're always just going back to the payday loan place. Um, but I also think the last one really, really plays in and because it's just, um, a common thing among Americans and it is, they don't want to cut their lifestyle. They don't want to live on what they make. They want to live above their means and the way that they're going to go about living above their means is buying things that they can't afford to impress people they don't like. And these, you know, when you go about buying things that you can't afford on a regular basis, then you may have to borrow from your next check in order to just pay the bills, in order to just, you know, keep the lights on because you spent the money that uh, you needed for bills or, you know, things that are necessities. You spent that on, you know, new clothes or you spent it on, you know, whatever. It, it may be on just discretionary spending. Um, so I think that, you know, people try to maintain this synthetic picture of success instead of just saying, well, I don't make enough money to do that. And there's like some shame to that, which I don't understand. I, I think um, we all need to be, you know, empathetic and, and sympathetic with others as to the lifestyle that they live and um, being able to say, you know, it, no matter what your income is, if you can look at your income and say that I'm doing all the right things and I'm... Um, paying my bills and taking care of my family and, and doing the right things, then that's respectable regardless of your income. Uh, but if you are specifically going out of your way to live above your means for no reason, that's an issue. And that choice to live on more than you make at any given time always leads to pain and can sometimes lead to heartache. So let's move to why I think payday loans are terrible and why I called them the interest monster at the end of my last video. Well, their interest and fees are worse than being late on any bill, and they're worse than being late on just about any other debt. So interest on a payday loan, on average, is 400% APR. Now, obviously they don't market it as this, right? That wouldn't make sense for the company to say, 400% loans, come get a 400% loan. That doesn't make sense. What they do is, is they will give you the short-term rate because this is short-term borrowing. So we're borrowing, you know, a week, two weeks, right? And they'll give you the short-term rate. Well, if you annualize that short-term rate, it's 400%. See, that's the thing. When you go and get, let's say, a car loan, or if you went and got, you know, you, know, you look at your credit card um, APRs, or, or you look at whatever else uh, type of debt that you get into your home, um, all of those rates are stated annually. But payday loan places do not state their rates annually. If they did, it would be glaringly obvious that this is um, just a horrible thing to fall into. 
because 400% APR on a dollar is crazy. And so also going along with why these things are so terrible, studies do find that on average, a borrower takes out eight loans of $375 each year. That's $3,000 worth of payday loans each year and spends $520 of interest on that $3,000. That is absolutely crazy. That is a wild amount of money to spend on $3,000. And then not only that, common fees, that's just interest. Fees are typically $15 to $30 per hundred owed. So let's just, let's go with the upside here, $30 per hundred. Well, on 3,000, you see where I'm going here, that is $900. So $900 on top of the interest of $520, that's, I mean, you're paying, you know, close to $1,500, $1,400, $1,500 on interest and fees. And that is just so crazy, so wild. Um, I understand the need for liquidity. And I understand if you're struggling, you're just grinding it out. Um, I get it. But payday loan places cannot be where you go because they are predatory. They are stealing your money away from you. And if you already don't have money in the first place, no way can you afford to not only pay back $3,000 over the course of a year, but also spend fourteen dollars or $1,500 in fees. And then what's another reason that they're terrible? Well, they get access to your bank account. And anyone who can get access to your bank account is likely to take something out of it. Just a word to the wise there. And what this can do is this, this can turn to overdrafts if you know, you're not careful. Because if you're taking out payday loans, you likely didn't have the money available anyway. And so then if the payday loan place digs into your bank account, then it's very likely that overdrafts could, could occur, which is going to cost you even more money in fees. And short-term loans, loans like this are going to require bank access. And I mean, it's your bank account. Think about that. It's your bank account. Nobody should have access to your bank account, but you and that bank. And that bank shouldn't be taking money out of your bank account. It just should be you. Um, So you have to understand that these places are only worried about taking money from you. They don't care that you need money today. They don't care that you're struggling. What they care about is that they're going to make 400% annual interest on you. They're going to make $1,500 over the course of a year on $3,000. And it's just absolutely wild to ever think to take one of these loans out. So then what's another reason that they're bad is that it's short-term lending. Miss a payment, you're going to collections. They're sending you to collections very, very, very quickly. And you think your credit may be bad already, let them send you to collections, you know, multiple times a year. If you're taking out eight loans a year and you get sent to collections a couple times, I mean, that's just going to destroy any credit that you already had. And then these last two reasons are my top two, really, reasons why I absolutely hate them. Number one, they prey on people in lower income areas. That's horrible. Like, if you look, just sometimes drive around, okay, and just Look for payday loan places, if your state has payday loan places. Just drive around. See where they're at. See if they are in places where there is, you know, it's a lower income area. Or if there is, you know, higher, you know, unemployment in that area. Or um, they, unfortunately, they do set up shop in, you know, African American and Hispanic American communities quite a bit. And that is horrendous. That is horrible. It's no wonder they've been banned in, you know, 12 states and Washington, D.C. It's no wonder because they are preying on people. Because the truth of it is, if you are setting up in lower income areas, then you're likely setting up in places with individuals who are less knowledgeable about finances and less knowledgeable about, you know, these interest rates and what it means and all this type of stuff. And so they're going to take advantage of those who don't know. And if you haven't, you know, figured it out already, most companies who um, are offering debt to individuals in some way, shape, or form, or especially some revolving debt, they are preying on individuals who don't know much. 
I mean, why do you think credit card companies for years would set up on college campuses? Because they were getting 18, 19 year olds who didn't know anything about personal finances and getting, getting them to sign up for, you know, a $2,000 credit limit and they would go and max that out and then they can't pay it back. And so it's, it's a hundred percent something that happens, but it shouldn't. And that's something really frustrating about payday loans and a reason why you should never take them out is because they don't even have respect for the people that they're helping. They're just looking to make a quick buck off of people who can't help themselves. And then lastly, they are just too freaking easy. All you have to do is just take in a pay stub and sign a sheet of paper and you get money. That's too easy. That's low friction. But they want it to be low friction. See, that's the, that's the thing. They want it to be low friction. Why? Because if it is low friction, then what do they get to do? They'll just, they can give you the money. And then if you don't make that payment, we're going to send you to collections or we're going to take money out of your bank account. Or they have all these safeguards in place that if you don't pay it, we're still going to get our money and we're going to get our fees and our interest and all of it. Then not to mention there are storefronts on many corners. I mean, like I said, in those um, particular places I talk about, and, and sometimes just in middle-class neighborhoods, there are payday loan places that just set up on the corner in high traffic areas and just wait on you to walk in. That's too easy. And then they don't make you wait on the money. It's not like you apply and walk out with no money. And No, you're going to apply and you're going to get the money in hand and you're going to be gone. And they, they give you the money right there. It's just all such a simple process, but it's so predatory. It's so easy to fall into um, if you have trouble paying your bills week to week or month to month or whatever it is. And it's just, they're going to take advantage of you, of you if you decide to get into this place. You can't fool with them because you'll end up getting burned. So how do you avoid payday loans? If I'm saying stay away from them, you may say, well, Dylan, I live paycheck to paycheck. I'm struggling to pay my bills. How do I avoid trying to go to a place like this and get the money I need to pay my bills. First off, budget, okay? Not this, I, I keep a mental note or um, I it, my expenses are so variable, my income's so variable, I don't know how to budget. No, none of that. Write down all your income, all your expenses in a conservative manner, meaning the lowest income you may make and the highest expenses you may have and go right down the list. And when I say the highest expensive expenses, be reasonable. I'm not talking about emergencies occurring. I'm talking about, you know, your, uh, your electricity bill being the highest that it is, or your water bill being the highest that it is, all those variable bills. Um, but budget. And what this plan will do, it will make you less likely to go over the amount of money that you owe in other places. It will make you use your income efficiently and have a plan for your income. And you have to write it down because plans that aren't written down and goals that aren't written down are likely not gonna get followed. So you have to make sure that you set everything up in a way that is, is going to allow you to be efficient, allow you to follow a plan. Because if you're just haphazardly going about things and purchasing things and you have no plan, what do you expect that you live paycheck to paycheck? Because you don't know where your money's going. And then another way, have an emergency fund. I have steps in my plan that talk about building emergency funds. And the reason for that is we don't want you going to the payday loan place to cover an emergency. We want you to have an emergency fund to cover your emergencies. And so that's, you know, that's really, you know, straightforward. We don't want you to pay interest on emergencies, have money setting aside. That way, if something bad does happen, we can take care of it pretty quickly and in cash up front. And then get more work. And you may say, well, that's, Easier said than done. You're right. It's easier said than done. But maybe your income's just not sufficient. Maybe you're living on a bare bones lifestyle and your income's just not sufficient. And if that is the case, then, you know, you just don't make enough money. You need to go out and get as many jobs as you can. Really grind. Really work hard. Don't be afraid of hard work. Go, and I'm not saying go get minimum wage jobs. I'm saying, you know how much people will pay you to go clean out their gutters and to go mow their yard and to go, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Just get a hustle about you, get a grind about you uh, to where you make the money that you need to cover the things that you need to do. Short-term pain for long-term gain. I don't want you to do this for the long term. I want you to get into a career that you love and get into a um, lifestyle that you actually 
enjoy what you do and want to do it over the long term. But if over the short term you have to feel some of that pain, it's something that you have to do because I would rather feel some pain working harder than the pain of getting sent to collections because I can't afford to pay back my, uh, my payday loan. And then last, but definitely not least, last and maybe, you know, most, cut your dang lifestyle. Because what I'm afraid of is not only are, you know, some, some individuals legitimately aren't making enough income and are living, you know, very modest lifestyles and very, um, you know, lifestyles that are, you know, really calm and not spending money on crazy things and they just don't make enough money. And I understand. And there, there needs to be something done there. But at the same time, there are far more people living above their means and living on way more than they make. And they don't have to be living on more than they make. They just don't want to feel the normalcy. They want to be special and they want to do, no, cut your dang lifestyle. Because if you don't cut your lifestyle, then you're going to end up at the front door of one of these places and they are going to take advantage of you too. Because what if, you didn't have a car loan that you couldn't afford if you didn't have maxed out credit cards that you you know did on on just frivolous stuff uh let's let's say your your rent wasn't too high because you just had to live in this neighborhood or this place then maybe you wouldn't have a payday loan and then additionally this kind of speaks to individuals who may be in a really rough place right now try to cut out your addictions as best you can get help that you need to get because addictions are costly Smoking cigarettes is costly. Drinking is costly. Um, doing drugs is costly. And all those things are going to hurt you financially. They're not just going to hurt you in your health and your ability to be a you know constructive you know working member of society. It's going to hurt you financially um, in a very big way as well. So if you know if you are in that place, you know you you do need to get help. Or if you you know aren't in, you know, some kind of addiction that just needs to get help. Let's say you, you know, are dipping tobacco all the time. Like you, you need to stop. This is costing you so much money. And if you're doing things like that, if you're maintaining addictions that aren't necessary to maintain and then going and getting payday loans, then you see my issue. My issue is that, um, you're going to spend a lot of money on cigarettes over time. Um, and that's money that, you know, you could have been putting away for emergencies and not have to, uh, go get a payday loan. So I, I understand that everybody's situation is different and I don't want to generalize, but I want to try to speak to everybody in a different way. And I know that everybody has different situations that they're in and I'm trying to meet those within, uh, this particular topic because I know that there's a, a plethora of different types of people who do fall into this payday loan trap. Um, but I, I just want everybody to understand that these things are horrible. These things are, are trying to come after you, trying to um, make you pay the most interest and fees that you can. And that is the exact opposite of what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to live in financial freedom and trying to get you to where you are making interest, not paying it. So I'm just begging you guys, please stay away from these places. They are absolutely going to nickel and dime you to death. You see that it's a cycle because the average individual who's going to get one is going back eight times over the course of a year. Don't fall into it. It's too tough a road and it's way too costly. Stay away at all costs. So hey, thanks for watching this video. I, I really do appreciate you. If you haven't already, go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, like this video. Leave me any feedback you have in the comments. If you have questions or comments uh, about this video or about this topic, make sure you leave them there. Uh, also, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcasts, uh, make sure that you subscribe and leave me a review. Uh, also, follow me on social media, at MNO with Dylan. I put a lot of good stuff up there. I think you all would really enjoy it, uh, and you get a lot out of just that, that simple follow. Uh, also, if you do want to work one-on-one, -on -one, um, and you do want to um, have this relationship of financial coach and client, then uh, I'd be more than glad to help you. Um, but you can go to my website, www.mnowithdylan.com and learn more about the financial coaching services that I offer. So tune in tomorrow as I talk about a topic of much contention. And that is just, I mean, it is such a large topic. I mean, people debate about it daily. And that is paying off your student loans, not going further into student loan debt, and managing the debt that you already have in a, in a responsible way. Student loans are just such a huge amount 
in the U.S. today. There's such a huge amount of student loan debt, and, and I don't want that number to increase. I want it to decrease as fast as possible, and the only way that that's going to happen is you paying it off, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow. So, hey, thanks for tuning in to this episode of Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. God bless.